Michigan probably isn't the first state you think of when it comes to railroads. You'd probably think about Michigan's history in the automobile industry first. However, Detroit, Michigan, before it was known for its output of automobiles, once was one of the leaders in the nation for producing Pullman passenger cars. Beyond that though, Michigan was quite the innovator when it came to the railroads being the first to build and implement new technology, equipment, among many other milestones. Today, as a Michigander myself, I'll be talking about just some of the state's noteworthy railroad firsts and milestones in chronological order. Way back on February 1st, 1832, before Michigan's first railroad was even built, and before it was even a state, the Western Immigrant Newspaper of Ann Arbor was the first in the country to propose the idea of a transcontinental railroad. Several years later on November 1st, 1836, the first operating railroad in the Midwest, west of the Allegheny Mountains and within the Michigan Territory, opened up as the 33-mile Erie and Kalamazoo Railroad. Initially, it operated as a horse-drawn carriage railroad running between the contested Port Lawrence, Michigan, now Toledo, Ohio, and Adrian, Michigan. The following year, on July 4, 1837, the railroad would acquire its first steam locomotive, also making it the first steam locomotive to operate in the newly formed state of Michigan. Jumping ahead to the 1850s on February 20, 1852, the Michigan Southern, later known as the Lake Shore and Michigan Southern Railroad, was the first to reach Chicago, Illinois from the east. The line spanned from Toledo to Adrian, Hillsdale, Coldwater, and White Pigeon, moving further west toward Elkhart, Indiana, and into Chicago. For some time thereafter, it was known as the Old Road, and was briefly the only rail line connecting the East Coast and Chicago. A couple years later in 1855, the notable Michigan Central Railroad became the first in the country to begin widespread use of a telegraph system to control train operations. This would set a standard for railroad communication in years to come. In 1857, Michigan was the first in the U.S. to operate a steam locomotive on a logging railroad. The Blendon Lumber Company used a seven-year-old Michigan Central 040 engine on wooden rails to haul logs within the Bass River Valley. Logging would become an extremely profitable commodity for railroads within the state, with several quickly and cheaply built logging lines springing up to cash in on the business. Moving towards the Thumb region in late 1859, the first train service out of Detroit towards Port Huron and Fort Gratiot began on the Chicago, Detroit, and Canada Grand Trunk Junction Railway. The route was known for a young Thomas Edison, who was the first in the country to publish and sell his weekly Herald newspapers on a train, and also acted as a candy butcher. He would later be thrown off a train in Smith's Creek after starting a fire in one of the railroad cars. As the 1860s rolled in leading to the American Civil War, Michigan played an important role in sending plenty of troops, food, and war materials by rail, impressing President Abraham Lincoln. The state's copper produced in the Upper Peninsula created 70% of what the Union Army needed for the war. Michigan's first movement of troops by the railroad took place on May 13, 1861. Meanwhile, though, in Marshall, Michigan in April 1863, 13 Michigan Central Railroad workers met and planned a National Railways Men organization. That May in Detroit, the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers, the oldest railroad labor union in the Western Hemisphere, was founded. At the end of the decade in 1869, Detroit, Michigan would be the first to introduce the usage of a refrigerated boxcar known as a reefer. Harvesting ice from nearby lakes and rivers was common in Michigan before the days of electrical refrigeration. Ice from the water would be sent on a conveyor to an ice house to be loaded into the reefer cars. These cars were revolutionary, allowing for the transport of perishable goods along long distances, all while staying fresh and allowed for more people to buy fresh food and dairy products. Moving into 1872, Elijah J. McCoy, an inventor raised in Ypsilanti, patented the first automatic lubrication system for locomotives and machinery. The device was so effective that it became near impossible to sell imitations that weren't the real McCoy, a saying that would become associated with anything being authentic. The next year in 1873, Michigan became the first state legislature to mandate use of the Westinghouse air brake system on trains, along with requiring that the locomotive bell and or whistle must be sounded when approaching railroad crossings. The Michigan Central returned again in 1876, being the first railroad to have regularly scheduled trains equipped with dining cars. These ran to and from Chicago. 1880 saw the invention of the Shea locomotive by Ephraim Shea of Cadillac. These were geared locomotives built for steep grades, tight curves, and heavy trains on rough tracks and terrain. 2,770 Shays would be built between 1880 and 1945, primarily by the Lima Locomotive Works in Lima, Ohio, for use on logging and mining railroads. The first railroad steam shovel was built in 1881 by the Industrial Works of Bay City for the Pier Marquette Railway. 
Railroad steam shovels were frequently used in public works and railroad construction projects. In November 1884, the paddle wheel car ferry Lansdowne began its career as the longest serving railroad car ferry in the world. It would move passenger and freight cars on the Detroit River between Detroit and Windsor in Ontario until 1970, an 86-year career. After its retirement from 1983 to 1991, it was used as a restaurant docked at Hart Plaza near the Kobo Center. Two Milwaukee Road Skytop lounge cars were used as part of the restaurant as well. In 1999, it was towed to Erie, Pennsylvania with intents to continue it as a restaurant, but it soon began to sink and was scrapped in 2009. The lounge cars were sent to the Milwaukee Road Heritage Center in Montevideo, Minnesota, an unfortunate end to a veteran of the railroad ferry world. Going back to the past, construction of the St. Clair River Tunnel between Port Huron and Sarnia, Ontario was initiated in 1888. It would open to traffic in 1891 as the first full-size subaqueous tunnel built in North America. The Grand Trunks line between Eastern Canada and Chicago became the longest route in the world owned under single management. The locomotives used to pull the trains through the tunnel and into each city's yards were 010 engines and at 195,000 pounds were the heaviest and largest locomotives built in the US for their time. The tunnel would be electrified in 1908, with diesels eventually taking over in 1958. The old tunnel would later be replaced in 1994 with an adjacent larger tunnel for newer intermodal cars and auto racks along with larger freight cars and locomotives. Once again, going back to the past in 1892, on November 24th that year, Ann Arbor No. 1 began railcar ferry service from Alberta, Michigan to Kewanee, Wisconsin. It was the first railroad ferry service in the world across open water. Transitioning into the 20th century, railroads in the U.S. were becoming fairly modernized and standards had begun to take hold, especially after World War I. Before that though, down in Detroit, another underwater rail tunnel opened up in the form of the Michigan Central Tunnel under the Detroit River between Detroit and Windsor, Ontario in 1910. This was in correlation with the new Michigan Central Station opening up in late 1913, unexpectedly. The impressive Beaux-Arts structure was forced into an early opening after Michigan Central's old station burned down on December 26th. At the time of the new station's formal opening on January 4th, 1914, it was the tallest railroad station in the world. Trains from the Michigan Central, later New York Central, Canadian Pacific, and Baltimore and Ohio made use of the station, allowing passengers to make connections to the still-thriving interurban system, other states, and Canada. During World War I and peak travel periods, over 200 trains per day would serve Michigan Central Station, with passenger waiting lines spanning from the terminal gates to the entrance doors. The station thrived until the 1960s as rail passenger travel greatly dwindled, and after 1971, only a couple Amtrak trains remained. The station would see its last Amtrak on January 6, 1988, and the structure soon fell into further disrepair. However, since 2018, Ford has owned the building and is currently restoring it for use as an office complex, restaurants, and retail businesses with housing planned for the top floors. Michigan Central Station's original purpose hasn't been forgotten either though, as Ford is retaining four station tracks in the case Amtrak restores service, or new commuter rail is brought to the iconic building. Going into the 1930s and 1937, the Michigan Railroad Club was formed as the first railroad group in Michigan. Not just that, but the club pioneered the idea of specialized excursions for rail fans in the US. Nine years later, complete dieselization reached Michigan via the Detroit and Mackinac Railway. They became the first railroad in the United States to discontinue steam locomotives, fully dieselizing with Alco road switchers by 1946. This claim, however, is contested by other railroads. 1959 saw the Chesapeake and Ohio Railway experiment with the first American road railer train between Grand Rapids and Traverse City. Road railers are standard truck trailers equipped with railroad couplers and wheel sets to expedite the movement of them from road to rail and back to road. This would set a standard for future road railer trains on American and Canadian railroads. A couple years later in 1960, the Grand Trunk Western Railroad would become one of the last common standard gauge carriers in the US to operate a steam locomotive in revenue service. The train ran from Durand to Detroit on March 23rd. U3B Northern number 6319 led 15 cars on train number 21 from Detroit to Durand, Michigan, while number 6322 led 22 cars of the second section. After the steam era ended in Michigan, not a whole lot of new innovation or milestones came out of the state. In 1974 though, Port Huron received an experimental Amtrak modular station design which was intended for suburban Amtrak services with small staff. However, the design only saw use in Port Huron. Skipping ahead to 1996, Michigan helped develop and was the first to adopt Incremental Train Control System or ITCS 
for 66 miles of Amtrak-owned track between Kalamazoo and New Buffalo. ITCS is an advanced safety system to monitor train speed and signals. The system saw implementation in September 2000, with speeds gradually increasing from 79 to 110 miles per hour by 2012. The last interesting and noteworthy Michigan Railroad factoid was in 2004, Pure Marquette Railway No. 1225 was used as the basis for sound effects in the film adaption of the 1985 Polar Express book, of which 1225 was the inspiration for author Chris Van Alsberg. So there's a good amount of contributions, unique firsts, and innovations coming out of Michigan for the railroads. While the Mitten State isn't always well known for its railroads, it still continues to have its unique railroad history, infrastructure, and equipment. Whether it was a national or global first, Michigan has had its fair share of contributions not only to the railroads of the United States, but the railroads of the world.